Hey, Feel Good Fathers. Today, I am joined by my man, Coach Josh Wood. He is a online coach for Strong for Life, and he's a speaker educator with a brand new TED Talk coming out, Six Habits to Eat Like an Adult. Josh, what's eating like an adult? Oh boy, it's a big one. Thanks for having me, first of all. Eating like an adult comes down to one simple thing, that you understand that your future is shaped by the decisions you make today, and you take ownership of the decisions that you make and their outcomes. So let's, so love that. So that's, that makes a lot of sense, right? We're eating for tomorrow. Um, what, what does that look like with regard to like diet, food, nutrition, health, longevity? You know, there's, there's a lot of, lot of nuance there. And the, the issue is there is no one way of eating that suits everybody, but there are habits that can apply to everybody. The, the way we go about eating, you know, it doesn't mean creating an emotional investment in obscure diets and, and crash dieting. And I spend too much time on the internet. So I see a lot of people promoting this and that, and they get so emotionally invested. And really it's, it's about finding something that's sustainable, learning how to understand what your body is actually, actually saying in terms of hunger. Are you even hungry? Well, let's check that. Let's see if you're actually hungry or if you're just emotionally eating, mm. you know, not, not feeding your emotions, learning what treats actually are, uh, you know, how to do, how to swap things out. You can always do better. And these, these are habits uh, that I talk about in, in the TED talk. And, you know, I actually, I mean, the whole talk came out of a, uh, a free guide that I made a couple years back to help my sister and her family called the eat like an adult guide. Uh, I put that together because my my sister and her husband wanted to eat better. And I'm like, well, how can I codify some simple steps? Uh, and that became a guide and that became uh, a lecture series. And then that became a TED talk. Love it. So one of the, one of the big things you mentioned, you spend a lot of time online. And so we live in a world where we're constantly in information overload. Information yep. overload uh, causes our brain to jump into emote, like we can only process emotion at that speed. So um, imagine like, imagine you're in a classic college setting and there's two professors that are talking at the same time. And like, you're trying to follow both threads. That's what like being on the internet is like and trying to follow what's happening. Um, and so your, your brain at that, your body basically shifts into how can I emotionally process what's going on? Because you make decisions about what you agree with and disagree with based on your emotions in yep. the moment. And so most of us are in, in there, like in that emotional state. Um, uh, Chesley Lundy is the interview to watch feel good fathers. If you want to go back and review that. Nice. Um, this triggered for me when you said not having an emotional attachment to a diet. So this I think is particularly interesting for our binge eating world, our yeah. emotional brain world. Let's walk through this a little bit. Oh boy. Uh, well, from, from where I sit and uh, survey the landscape online, you know, I'm, I'm spending too much time on threads these days. Uh, <laughs> you know, new platform. I've, I've been on Instagram for, for years and years and years, and it's been my primary platform. And then uh, the threads, thing popped up and I've been playing around on that. And it's just like, it throws you straight into topics that might interest you. And so I've just get so many people that are out there like, this is the best way to eat. You need to be carnivore. You need to be vegan. You can't eat uh, too much seafood. You have to only eat vegetables. And like, I look at all these and it always, always, always comes down to how they feel about something it has absolutely mm -hmm. nothing to do with whether or not that's a reasonable thing to say, or whether it's actually a healthy diet, or whether it's going to be sustainable for them in the long run. It's about how emotionally jazzed up they are in that point in time. Uh, and I ran into a lot of online pushback when I started uh, bad mouthing burpees and ice baths, uh, you know, as as things that people just use because it makes them feel tough as opposed to like looking at whether or not they apply to what they want to achieve. Oh boy. That's another area where people just have this massive emotional attachment without looking at whether or not it's actually serving them. Uh, and nothing gets people more emotionally charged than their choice in food. I, I love this cause I'm exactly the same way. People ask me all the time. It was like, do you ice plunge? I'm like, no, 
I hate cold showers. I hate it. It doesn't, I've done it before. It didn't help me when I did it. But what did help me was at that time I listened to, I had these little five to 15 minute emotion, like motivational messages like that I would listen to. And it was like, it was like this podcast format that helped me. So I was like, okay, well, how would I just listen to this guy for 15 minutes while I'm in the right. shower? That works. The cold shower right. doesn't matter. Um, it's not, it's not impacting me. I, I have Which podcast is that? Oh, it doesn't exist anymore. So it was oh. for, um, uh, once upon a time, feel good fathers and Josh, um, I was a, um, I was an internal salesperson for a MLM company. And Ooh. so I sold business education and this was uh, an internal sort of podcast for that community. And, um, it was great. It was super good. Like if, if you can imagine just like die, somebody that travels the world that would be sitting, you know, in, in the Sydney Harbor, looking at all the yachts and then be in the Caribbean the next weekend, then be over here and just kind of like him stream of consciousness how to stay motivated, how to keep your energy up, that kind of stuff, how to, how to think about things and, and what his perspective was on the world. That's what I was listening to. Interesting. And that was helpful. Uh, but I agree with you. I think that we have the, one of the other byproducts because, because today we're talking about being in the emotional brain, uh, that uh, one of the byproducts of being in an emotion is that you jump into tribes and you have tribal, you, you think tribally. And so what ends up happening is that when you're in that emotional brain, you are thinking who around me is in my tribe, who around me agrees with what I agree with, because I don't have time. I can't think, I can't reason. I can't do all this kind of stuff. I can't decide whether I want to be on Atkins slash keto. Um, I, I love whole foods or paleo or whatever, yeah. <laughs> you know, like whatever it happens to be. That's right. It's absolutely a form of tribalism, and I have nothing against tribalism, but it's important to understand your own motivations. And uh, a few weeks back, uh, I had a little, I did, I have a very small podcast of my own, which is mostly just me monologuing about specific fitness topics and then, or health topics as well, and then just uh, using that as a, a reference to to give out content to clients and, and in my Facebook group and stuff. So it's it's not really anything big, but it's, it's something I use to, to hash out topics. And one of the ones I went mm -hmm. through was ice baths. And I was just like, you know, listen, if all you want to do is something that's difficult and something that is going to make you tougher and give you that little bit of adrenaline dump, then I want you to try my new program, which is called getting slapped in the face, uh, and have your, <laughs> your partner, your friend, yourself, you can sit there every morning and you can just, you know, it's easy to, to tailor to your intensity level, you know, your experience level, you can increase the dosage, you could decrease it. it's portable, you can take it anywhere, it takes no setup. So I just want you, if you're feeling like you need to toughen up a bit and wake up quickly, slap in the face, give it a go. Uh, and a lot of people in the, uh, the uh, I'm the toughest person alive because I sit in cold water crowd, uh, we're not fond of that. <laughs> For some reason. I think that is. That is so awesome. Uh, I first heard about the the cold, the hot water and the cold water. Um, and it was when I was doing uh, martial arts in high school. So I joined this um, Aikido studio, uh, first generation. So O Sensei, then him, right? So he, he was my sensei. And it was what you would consider the classic dojo school setting, where if it was winter, you opened the doors, turn on the AC, and you were practicing yeah. in that. And then in the summer, you would close everything and turn on the heat and you would, you would practice in that. And the whole idea in that context was you don't know where you're going to fight, Yeah. right? You don't, you don't know where the fight could break out. So you might as well figure out how to roll around when the ground is ice cold, because if yep. you're outside in the winter and it's ice cold, you might need to do that. You, you could be outside in the 95 degree heat. And so there's a practical application for those things. Yeah, for sure. And um, and so that's where I first heard about it. And then everything else came loose. What, what is, what's striking to me here is that you have a pattern of discernment, uh, and, and a discernment comes from doing research and deciding what, like what's real, what's not, is there data validating this thing? Is there not data validating this thing? Uh, when did you learn about that piece? 
uh, I think that's kind of just been in my nature growing up. Uh, I don't know if there's something that really ticked that off, but I've always been very much of the, uh, hey, wait a second, that thing doesn't make sense. Let me look into that. Uh, and I think that's just kind of how I am because, well, I mean, if we go way back, I grew up in a religious household and uh, this one of those things where, you know, family would be like, this is the thing. And I'd be like, ah, that doesn't make sense. So I think it's just who I am a little bit. I gotcha. I gotcha. Is that something, is that level of thoughtfulness, is that something that you uh, work to instill in your children? Yes. I mean, they're, they're young. Uh, you know, my, my oldest son is about to turn four and my sure. youngest is seven months. Uh, we, we try, but at that age, it's, it's a lot of just, well, uh, chaos mean, management. Do you mean they're not, they're not reading high philosophy? They're not, they're not Tol Tolstoy yet? They're, <laughs> not, not quite, not quite. No, no, no uh, crime and punishment? Not yet? Not, not yet. Not yet. We're getting there. There's uh, there's a great crime and punishment for children that we're working through. Got it. Got it. Okay, good. The picture book, right? The picture yep. book yep. <laughs> with the cardboard cutouts. That's awesome. I love um, one of my favorite uh, quotes online. I, I'm a really big, I, I love Terry Crews. So I think he's, I think he's really funny. He He's moved me. Uh, he's inspired me quite a few times with some of the things he said, but I remember he had this one promotion where he had a, a poster of him and he was like, are you hungry or just bored? You know? And then when you said, uh, when you're talking yeah. about listening to your body, like actually how you're hungry, I have had this conversation with an, with a wakeboarding athlete friend of mine. Um, what up, Brandon, if you're listening, um, that was really fun. And he talked about figuring out like what actual hunger is. What yeah. can you break this down for feel good fathers? Yeah. So I, I run, uh, I have, I run a test with people. And, and this is a big part of, of what I, I talk about in, in my whole eat like an adult talks. And then in the TEDx talk is like, I call it the apple test. And it's, you know, something that floats around in, in the industry a bit. And a few people have probably heard about it, but it's a simple thing. You know, if you are digging around in your, in your cupboard or your desk drawer at work, looking for something sweet in a packet, you know, just, just learn to, to stop and ask yourself. If, if Coach Josh was to magically appear next to you and hand you a, a beautiful, ripe Tasmanian apple, which are the best apples in the world, and offer that to you, hygiene questions aside, uh, would you eat it? Like, would you, would you eat a piece of fruit if it was handed to you, if it was convenient? If you're hungry, assuming you don't have some sort of weird allergy, you'd eat a, eat a piece of fruit. If you're not, and you're like, no, I need that piece of chocolate, I need that donut, I need that cookie, or whatever it is, you're not hungry. You have a craving that's probably related to something else in your life. You might be stressed, you might be tired, it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon, you're at work, you're bored, maybe you're thirsty, maybe your overall diet is not giving you the nutrients you need, and you need to look at that. But if you want, if you want something sweet, and you're not going to eat a piece of fruit, it's because you want junk. And if you want junk, well, you're not hungry. You know, if you're actually hungry, you eat real food. But if you're craving something, you eat what's what's most convenient. You know, you can get real hungry and just eat whatever. And that's a legitimate thing. But it's not the same thing every day at three o'clock and at 1030 in the morning and at eight o'clock at night. Like you're not. You're not hungry for nutrients, then you are filling a pattern. You are, you know, completing a habit that you do every day because you get a craving because that's when you're stressed. That's when you're tired. That's when you're bored. And so I said, you know, run the apple test. It doesn't have to be an apple, but something that is convenient and healthy. Keep it on hand. And when you get to that exact same time every day where you're like, oh, my God, I'm starving. Ask yourself, are you actually starving? Uh, and eat an apple. Apples are filling. They're great for you. Uh, and I get I get messages pretty regularly from from clients and, and people who've seen the talk because um, it, it, we had a, a pretty big, big crowd at that event. And people are like, I, I run the apple test now and I'm not hungry <laughs> or they're, or they're like, I ate a lot of apples now. I said, like, cool, great. They're great for you. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, apple a day kind of thing. Um, so having some sort of convenient and practical, uh, like a B test to run makes life easier. You got to have systems. You got to have systems to deal with these either emotional or, or deep seated habits that bodies create you know 
Like we're gonna we're gonna reach for sweet things. It's in our nature. Mm. Uh, you know, break open the honeycomb and, and eat the honey or gorge on overripe summer fruit. Like it's in it's in our genes. But we don't have that now. We have Snickers bars. Sure. Would so does that apply to any fruit? You know, like I said, if I if we were looking at something practical, right? There's the how do I just keep good food in the house and then yeah. take snacks? Um, there's there's that one. Uh, the water test, I think, is I think it's completely underrated. I actually have uh, for those of you listening, you won't see this, but I actually have my gallon growler on my desk with me, and I go through my my gallon and I do usually do a gallon and two pints of water every single day. Um, like those are things like I always find like, Hey, I'm lagging in energy right now. You know what? I'm going to drink a pint of water before I do anything else <laughs> that I might do some squat. great system. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of it is though, the, the habit, like, cause you're kind of talking about, I think it's like atomic habits. Like what's the micro habit? Like I'm having mm -hmm. a craving. Can I ride the wave or do I ask a question? What's the pattern interrupt? That kind of jazz. That's awesome. Okay. And so any fruit works for that? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's got to be convenient. You know, like a banana works fine. Uh, if you find yourself eating too many bananas, you're probably going to have digestive issues. I mean, apples are pretty limiting uh, because they're they're high pectin content. They actually absorb a lot of water and they, they make you feel full. Mm. Uh, and so it's, it's one of those things like you can't eat that many apples without feeling very full very quickly. You know, pectin and other fibers in there. Uh it's usually not super convenient to have a bunch of like mangoes or pineapples around. So it's just, it's about convenience. It's about having that thing sitting on your desk so you can actually break that cycle. Uh, if you're starting to like bring out jackfruit and durian or something, you're going to probably have some issues, but generally fruits, fruit, just whatever's convenient. Okay. That's awesome. Um, and then uh, you, we may have already talked about this, but you said treats. What are treats? Ooh, it's a touchy subject. <sighs> So treats is hold on, uh, hold on, Josh. Are, oh, yep, yep. Are you sure you're ready to go here? Oh man, it's you know what? We've we've gone too far. We've gone too far. <laughs> We're not pulling punches today. <clears throat> All right. So a treat uh, is something that is a particularly enjoyable uh, experience or occasion. That's generally something that is a reward. You know, it's 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 an exchange for something. You've done something, you get a treat. Mm. If you're having something every day at the same time or the same time each week, it is not a treat. That is your diet. If you are treating yourself to a glass of wine every night, if you are treating yourself to that afternoon packet of Tim Tams, if you're treating yourself to drinks and pizza every Friday night. That's not a treat. That That is your diet. That is how you eat regularly. And so my stance is accept that so that you can decide whether or not it serves you. And that treats, treats are treats. They need to be in reward for something. You just closed a great deal. You, you worked, you know, night shifts for four nights. Yeah, go for it. But just for existing and making it to the end of the day, that's not a treat. You're, you're emotionally eating. You are medicating yourself with something. And that has a time and a place too. But if you're sitting there going like, why do I feel like crap all the time? And why am I, <clears throat> why am I fatter than I want to be? Like, and if you're complaining about your, your existence like that, it's not serving you. And you need to realize that, that, that you're not treating yourself. You're just eating garbage. Love it. I, I don't think anybody I'd ever heard that framing of it, that if you have a habit of consuming something every Friday or something like that, that's actually your diet. So when you mm. go to your nutritionist, you, you should, or to your doctor, you should say, you know what? I have a glass of wine and a pizza every Friday. <laughs> that's a part of your diet, right? It is. It very much is. And when I do food journals with, with new clients, like that's the stuff I want to know. Like write down everything you eat or drink, everything. It all counts because I want to look at patterns uh, like for myself. Like I'm not, I'm not against eating delicious things. Uh, it's uh, once every week or two, I will get poutine from the food van near us because it's excellent and I love it. It is my favorite food and you can pry that from my cold dead hands. Uh, I have absolutely no problem with that, but I eat whole foods for 
almost every other meal and snack I eat from home. We make most of our, our food, you know, like this, this is, it's not a treat per se, but it is a part of my diet that I'm unwilling to give up because it is my favorite meal generally every Thursday or every second Thursday, depending on their hours, you know, their food van, they go places. Yeah. Love it. What are the challenges in, what are the challenges in bringing this into the home? So if we're health conscious as feel good fathers, we want to improve our habits. We want to either for us get in shape or actually, if you're a feel good father, you want your whole family and your kids to thrive on really good Mm. food. What, what are challenges that you've seen and how could we overcome them? Uh, it's basically like running the Apple test always, you know, so I have a four year old and first thing he gets up, he's like, I want a snack. And I'm like, well, it's, it's breakfast. It's not a snack. He's like, no, I want a snack, which means he wants something treat. Like he wants a, something sweet. He's like, I want a, a bagel with honey and jam. And I'm like, you can't have bread with sugar and sugar on it. First thing in the day, like, come on, kid, be reasonable. And of course, being a four year old, he's like, no, that's what I want. Uh, and so a lot of it is a lot of it is just uh, going through the process of like, okay, if that's what you want, you have to eat this first. And so we have like, you know, safe foods, foods that we know he's going to like no matter what, which are acceptably nutritious. Uh, and then if he wants to eat more, whatever, all he does is run around in circles all day. He can basically eat as much as he wants. Uh, and he's just going to run more. But it's our job to make sure there's a level of nutrition in that too. Uh, and so it'll be like, okay, well, if you know, if you have some, some yogurt with blueberries, you can, you can have half a bagel with honey afterwards, or, you know, like, oh, you don't want to eat what we're eating for dinner. Okay. Well, you have to try it. And mm-hmm. then we can talk about something else. Okay, good. We got some homemade mac and cheese left over from last night. We've got some roast beef. You know, those are your options. Usually it ends up being like yogurt and fruit. And I'm fine with that. Greek yogurt with a bit of fruit. Great all around meal and snack. Uh, and so as long as we have something with a bit of protein in it, I'm like, okay, if you eat this first, you can have something sweet. But sweet for us is like, you know, a bit of toast with buddy and uh, butter and local honey. It's it's a bit of, you know, uh, berries and whatever. It's, you know, we're not giving them cookies and ice cream. Uh, but it's, it's like you have to take this box first. Uh, and that mostly works okay sometimes as uh, children are emotional beings. <laughs> sometimes it's can. still, yeah, <laughs> we, we do what we can. It's still, it's still a bit of a fight, but I also have the, and this might get me in trouble, but, you know, I, I tell them, like, if you don't want to eat, that's fine. You're allowed to be hungry. But when you're done playing and, and you're ready for bed, this this is what we have. And and it's it's this, or it's, it's yogurt, or it's a glass of milk. It's, it's something decently nutritious with a bit of protein and fats in it. Like, you can have that. If you don't want that now, that's still what's available later. And, <clears throat> you know, I'm not going to make them sit at the table and be like, no, you have to eat this and get your Brussels sprouts, whatever. It's like, if you're not ready to eat now, you work on a different schedule from us. So you go build some stuff with your with your Magna blocks or your Duplo or whatever. And you go do your thing. We'll eat. And then later, if you feel like eating, this is what you have. Uh, mm-hmm. And so just sort of making sure things that are available all the time are, are nutritious and that nutritious things are always available. Uh, always putting them before the cravings of a four-year-old, which is always a sweet thing. Uh, and and just kind of realizing too that at this age, like they need their nutrients, but they also need just energy. They they need right. to be fed. They need lots of food. And and sometimes it's like, he just wants to eat bananas all day. Or uh, his, his first word was apple, actually. Um, so like we, apples have been a big part. It is. It, they've been part of our, part of our, uh, existence for a long time uh and tasmania is uh well known for its very high quality apples and it was one of the biggest exporters of apples worldwide it was called mm. the apple apple isle up until the 1950s uh so apples are part of our life so there's always apples around and, and usually some other sort of fruit and it's like you could just eat you know if you want some crab go to the fruit bowl eat whatever you want out of there but at meal times you know you got to have something with some protein and some fat and then you can continue to eat whatever else is around. Yeah. Yeah. I love the focus on, on the protein fats and then the, the complex sugars. We're trying to get that, that back. My, uh, well, my diet wasn't great with my oldest, you know, she has the habits that we even still with her. 
And then with my youngest, she's been pretty much eating what I've been eating now. So it's like, she likes asparagus and chicken and eggs and like the foods that I eat all the time. Yeah. Cause I mean, I'm a very basic eater, uh, trying to do the same thing all the time. And, and that makes it easy to maintain. And eggs, yeah. we got we got a bunch of chickens, so we get lots of eggs. And eggs are another one of those staples. This kid will just, uh, he'll happily just sit there with a hard-boiled egg over like almost anything else. He's like, no, I want a hard-boiled egg. I'm like, okay, you don't want this delicious dinner that we made? That's fine. We'll have a hard-boiled egg. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> when did you, um, so this is different, like the, there's a school of thought of like, no, this is what we're, the discipline of like, hey, this is what's prepared for you. What's yeah. your stance on that stuff? Like what's your, there's, there's tons of stuff we can talk about here in auxiliary, but I'm, I'm curious about your stance on this piece. Yeah. Uh, you know what, if kids, okay, I might be a bit, bit of a hippie here, but they don't, they didn't have a choice in what food was made. Like if they're not partaking in creating the menu and, and choosing the food, what, what are the odds they're going to like it? You know, like mm -hmm. I, there's plenty of things I don't want to eat. And I have that choice as an adult to not eat them. But the way we set it out is you, this is what's on the menu. We let, we let him have a, have a choice in, in picking things that he might want to eat during the week and whatnot. He usually forgets by the time we get to them, but still. Mm -hmm. uh, and he just has to try it. He has to try new foods. We do that. We've always done that. We, we, we eat a lot of very different cuisines. You know, he's actually a pretty big fan of curries and, and uh, Malaysian food. Uh, loves loves a fried rice uh, and a high end chicken. He's actually huge on chicken. Uh, and you know, if something's new or he's not feeling like it, he still has to try it. And then we have the safe foods, uh, the things that he likes. And like I always say, you can be hungry. You don't have to eat because I know you will eat when you're hungry enough. And then it will be yogurt and berries, or it'll be, you know boiled egg or whatever we have around he will eat that stuff when he's hungry but just because we're hungry doesn't mean he is just because we like the food doesn't mean he will like it and there's no point making him eat food that is like kids their their taste buds change so rapidly and mm. he, he's a he's a good boy we had a a chicken and leek pie uh once that a, a friend made us and i didn't like that at all it was it was awful <clears throat> it was like stodgy and it was awful and, but I'm, you know, I'm eating it because it's, it's what we got right now. And we're like, you know, if you want to have this for, for after dinner, whatever it was at the time, you know, you got to eat your pie. And he was so, this was before he got really rebellious and he's sitting there and he's eating it, putting a mouthful and he's like, Ugh. Ugh. And I'm like, buddy, are you choking? He's like, no. Puts another mouthful in. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> buddy, is that making you gag? Like, is that? really bad he's like yes i'm like oh buddy you don't you don't have to do that oh man i was like oh you you sweet boy like you don't have to make yourself throw up eating something you don't like that is no sorry buddy we didn't know is that you didn't like it that much we'll, we'll get you something else you know it's like what what benefit is there to making him eat that that's a silly thing that's just like like why like i don't see any anything that that's good is going to come out of that i think I love this. One of the, the way that I'm understanding what you're saying is that we made an agreement in um, my wife and I, that we would never use food as a punishment or incentive. It's like desserts always there unless there's something crazy egregious, but dessert is always available because it's a part of dinner. And so we've actually been working on fruit with like whipped cream or fruit with honey, but I love yeah. local honey as well. Fruit with maple syrup. That's going to be your, an acceptable snack. And, and we've tried to identify something very similar to what you're doing, which is these are things that like, if, if you just tell me you're eating it, it's fine. So yeah. any time of the day, if you're like strawberries with a little bit of whipped cream, I'm like, fine. Yeah. Good. Get, get that in you. That's fine. <laughs> I'm good with that. Yeah. So that's, that's really good. And I love the, and it, it's like, you've been living this world of we're not using food as an incentive. We're not making this, this is just, it's fuel. And then there's everything else that's going on. Is that something that you see in your house? Yeah, basically. I mean, I will absolutely use food as an incentive, but little does he know, like, it's all good for him. <laughs> all right. Well, if you can hurry up the stairs and get inside with your backpack, we'll get you some apples and, and honey. He's like, oh yeah, great. And starts running upstairs. Like, okay, cool. 
whatever. That's awesome. So Sucker. Of being an adult, right? Yeah. He's going to come back. You got some healthy food into you. Yeah. He's going to be 25. He's going to be like, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, he'll, he'll be, he'll come home one day, hands on his hips, coach, Josh, dad, you got me. Gotcha. <laughs> That's awesome. Let's talk about, uh, I love this. Let's talk about sort of balancing fitness, right? So you got young kids. Yep. This is the hard world. This is the, um, uh, as a feel good father. So my attitude is always like, get what you can in. Like you're not single anymore. You're not newly wed. You don't have eight hours of the day to do whatever the heck you want. You have six hours that are full with a snotty running around energy ball. Yep. And then you got to do what you can. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's basically it. <laughs> cause, uh, cause I've got a, I've got a four year old he's, he's four in a couple of weeks. And then I've got a seven month old who is a hundred percent on the move. He's like a little Roomba. Like you put him in a room and he just makes his way around in circles, touching everything, climbing on stuff, drooling on it, putting his mouth. It's like, it's just, it's chaos. Um, yeah. And that, that's just it. It's you do what you can. So you, I set sort of minimum standards. Like I, I do jujitsu. Uh, and my, my focus is to, to hit that at least twice a week. Um, I've had some, uh, traveling recently and people coming into town from abroad on jujitsu days. So like some of those are non-negotiable and I haven't hit my two sessions a week, but like, that's, that's my thing. You know, I'm, I'm self-employed. I can, I can make it happen during the day. And so I'll do that at least twice a week. Uh, and like, that's, if I do that, fine, great. I'm not going to die anytime soon. I'm going to feel good. I'm building skills. It's plenty of a workout. Fine. But then I have like second tier if I can get it in stuff and that'll be like, all right, if I get two jujitsu sessions in, I need to get two supplementary workouts. Uh, and so one of my teaching gigs uh, with the personal training school uh, has a gym. And so like, if I can finish class and I don't have my own clients immediately after I'll go do a workout there. Or as uh, you know, if you can see it, maybe in the background, I've got my uh, gymnastics rings hanging from my, my office ceiling. I've got a garage gym directly below me, you know, I'll get something in and my goal is to do at least 30 minutes, uh, and addition to, to jujitsu sessions. Uh, and so I have like these, these tiers of if I can get it done. Uh, and so it's like, all right, if I can't do anything else, jujitsu, if I can get jujitsu, try and get in at least two supplementary training sessions of at least 30 minutes, primarily strength and hypertrophy work. Uh, and then where I can walk hit my protein requirements. And so everything sort of builds on a tier. It's like, if I go to the very base of the pyramid, the most important thing, sleep. Hmm. If in doubt, get more sleep. Okay. Then it's make sure I eat enough protein. Okay. Then it's get the workouts in jujitsu. Okay. So that can almost always be done. If I do nothing else, I'll be fine for now. If I can find some more time, I had in two supplementary workouts. So this week it was a, a push pull workout at the gym. Uh, and then yesterday, uh, this is what I, I filmed for YouTube, but it's a, a, a 30 minute grip strength workout. Mm. Uh, and so uh, pairing deadlifts with uh, grip training specifically for, for grappling. Uh, and so it's great. And if I can fit another third one in this week, whoo. I'm saying I might be able to get a little bit in today. I might just do some, some Olympic work or I might go down and just do a bit of legs. Uh, great. And then I got jujitsu tomorrow for two hours. So I'm set. Uh, it's going to be good. And I, and I didn't have a Monday this week. I was traveling. So, you know, it's, it's all these tiers. It's these levels. Like what is the bare minimum? It's sleep. And then it's like, all right, what's after that? It's food. It's nutrition. There's no point working out if you're not sleeping or eating. All right. What's after that? jujitsu because that's my focus this year it's skill building uh it's 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 exercise it's community like it's top tier benefit Hmm. and this beginning of this year i set myself a a series of goals like this year i'm focusing on fighting music and hunting and those are my priorities this year and so it's it's like okay that has to get done fighting is the most convenient getting to jujitsu is 15 minutes away that gets done first in the interstitium, in the spaces between everything, try and get a little music practice. When I get some weekends free, go out and try to hunt. 
Hmm. Interesting. What what was less about the specifics, but what was the pattern? Is that something that you do every year? You pick priorities every year? Kind of. Yep. Yeah, I, I try to. Um, last year, my my goal was to to read a bunch of these um, uh, books I've been collecting on like training, nutrition, physical fitness, and stuff, and. I got through absolutely zero of them. Everything was focused on like business development and, and running an online business. You have to do a lot of that stuff. A lot of it was all it was all marketing and business development. I was like, okay, well, the goal swapped, you know, quarter quarter of the way through the year. It's like, not nah, this this isn't gonna happen. These books are still sitting on my desk, been here for a year, uh, because other things took priority. But I try to set some overarching goals uh for the year. M- more so priorities. These are the things I need to focus on. And like with my training, you know, the last couple of years it was it was hypertrophy, build some muscle, get a little bit bigger. Now I'm trying to apply that to other activities. You know, a couple of years back, it was prioritizing uh, being outside because uh, I've, I've got a history of working as a wilderness guide and and did a lot of backpacking. And so it was like, all right, get outside. We're doing trail running this year. We're doing uh, rucking, backpack training out mm-hmm. in the hills. That was the focus. And so just making sure I'm doing lots of different things, but not trying to do all the different things at the same time, because really it's not feasible with the way that my life is running. Love it. Love it. Um, I absolutely love the whole of rucking and making sure that's happening. My, um, oh, yep. You can hear it. My dog is welcoming my little one home, which is great. Nice. <laughs> so uh, not sure if that came through, but there it is. Feel good fathers, Luna. I give you Luna. Uh, we added, I added recently the, the rucking and it's something I've, I've really loved. And I, but I love, I, I think you kind of hinted at it. There's this, when you're talking about jujitsu, there's a multi-benefit to the activities that you're, you're taking on, which I love. So for me, yeah. rucking is, I'm very similar. I do a lot of coaching, you know, at my computer, I'm here talking to different people all day long, doing a thing. And then the rucking is, I make sure like I don't bring a phone, I don't bring anything, and I just I'm out in nature, eyes on the horizon, doing the regular activity, which is a yeah. really nice reset. Yeah, yeah. Again, it's it's got a lot of aspects to it that are beneficial: time in nature, physical exertion, peace for your mind, you know, sunlight in your eyes, like all all the good stuff. Is there's a lot of things that make that better than just walking on a treadmill in your office. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Interesting. And so, um, what would be, if you were to say, all right, cause you're, you're right in it. And I, we got a heart for our young, young new dads here, here at Feel Good Fatherhood. So what would you say you're a health conscious guy, you know, you've got, you got some pretty good balance. Let's help them get their diet slash routine, like that diet slash fitness back at some sort of level that it was before. What are the, and I love your, your model of the pyramids. What's, what's the pyramid? What's the, what's the priority set for them? Uh, I, I mean, it's basically what I do. You know, it's, it's, if you're not sleeping, everything else falls apart. If you're not eating well, everything else falls apart. When it comes to exercise, if you have to do the bare minimum walk, you know, I, I work with a lot of people who are very overweight and the idea of doing a lot of exercises is daunting and they can't figure out where it fits into their time. Cause, cause the demographic I work with is busy parents and professionals, people who just are time poor and they need someone to be like, do this thing. So we often start with walking and, you know, everybody's like, how am I supposed to walk enough? Blah, 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 blah. It's like, listen, I guarantee you can fit in 10 minutes of walking around each meal, before each meal, after each meal, whatever. 10 minutes, Mm. three meals a day, 30 minutes a day, three and a half hours a week. If I told you that you could fit in three and a half hours of extra activity during the week, people go, no, it's crazy. I don't have that kind of time. Yes, you do, but you have to learn how to uh, microdose it and how to prioritize it. And so we start there. Like if you're not doing anything else, if you're not sleeping, don't worry about anything else. If you're not eating well, don't worry about anything else. And then when it comes to exercise and you don't have anything going on, start walking. Mm -hmm. Get that three and a half hours of extra walking a week. And then if you can do that, we'll add in something else. And then I'd say some sort of resistance training, strength training doesn't have to be a lot. 20 to 40 minutes is a great start. Get yourself a little warm, lift something heavy, make your muscles scream, call it a day. Don't worry about, you know, the best set and rep systems or how many times a week. Just try to get in 
know, at least two sessions where you make muscles burn mm. and you'll feel better and you'll get stronger and you'll build some muscle. And that stacked with good sleep, good food, good walking starts making big changes very quickly. And the key is just stair-stepping that stuff, you know, like do priority one first. If in doubt, you know, you need to take a nap. Mm-hmm. If you're like, I've slept four hours over the last four nights and I'm supposed to do a workout right now, nah, take a nap, sleep for an hour. That is going to be way better for you because mm. your recovery is going to be shot anyway. So stick to like, what is the most important thing for my health? Sleep, food, then movement. And when with food, you know, throwing, throwing water and stuff there too. But, you know, like I'm just kind of assuming that people at least drink some water. And if you start eating whole foods, you get a lot more water through your food. <clears throat> I'm very, but uh, yeah, if you're not sleeping, man, just, just sleep. Like you're an adult, take a nap. Love it. <laughs> you're an adult, take a nap. Uh, how to six habits to eat like an adult. Uh, uh, Coach Josh will find some of the, the links and everything down in the description. Uh, Coach Josh Wood, everybody. Thank you.